Good morning and welcome to Eternity Church. We're absolutely delighted to have you joining us again. You know, every Sunday that we do online church, we're one Sunday closer to actually getting back into the building. And today already I can tell you that the, the worship was recorded in the church. I'm sitting here in the church doing the preach. And so little by little, we're getting back to what will be the new normal. So please do listen out for announcements on the Facebook page and over the coming Sundays when we'll be starting to make a plan of moving forward. Well, come on, let's get into today's service. I'm really excited about what, li what lies ahead for us. Let's get into some worship first up.
cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance is by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the
thank you for the worship that we've just had just now. We thank you that even through the screen, even through, even though we're not in the same room, you've been moving and you've been chasing people down, chasing people's spirits down and, and changing people's lives during this time. And God, I just pray that for the rest of the service, you'll be doing exactly the same, that your Holy Spirit will be present in our midst, wherever we are, whether we're at home or whether we're you know, watching on holiday, what, where, wherever we are, God, I just thank you that your spirit is not confined to the conditions of our life, God. And Lord, just during the rest of this service, will you make yourself known to these people who are going to be watching? And God, I just pray over the rest of the service that whatever needs to be said through Paddy to these people will be said and will be received. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey Church, my name is Michael and it's a pleasure to be hosting Church News today. Um, for starters, I would just like to congratulate all you students who got your A-level results. I know it's been a difficult process, but you know, you've done brilliant and it'll be great for you to join us or you know, any church, you know, that you want to join in Norwich or wherever you're going. So I just want to congratulate you that for that. And on to Church News. First notice, I'd just like to welcome back Paddy and Janica. Uh, I know Paddy's got some mad, mad quality words for, for us coming, you know, in, in future weeks. So, yeah, i just like to uh, big up the fact that he's back. Woo, woo, woo. And uh, also, i just like to uh, do a little plug to our social media. Um, we've got Jake, who's behind the camera, actually. He's been doing a fantastic job with the Facebook, with the Instagram. So I just recommend, if you're new to the church or if you've been here for decades like you know me and my family have been then yeah just get on that Facebook page get on that Instagram uh, page and just yeah interact with it you know share like comment all this good stuff because when you do that then it gets the engagement up there's some complicated algorithms let's just say however what I can tell you is that you know if you engage with the videos more then more people who need to see the good word and all the fun stuff we're doing will see it and so, just an example of something fun that we've done recently that you'll be able to see on Facebook is our picnic. We had a picnic on Sunday, I believe it was, and from what I heard, I wasn't there. However, I heard some great, great, great things about it. You know, it's just a time where families and even individuals from our church can just come together and just, you know, relax. Like, we need to see each other's faces. People need to see humans. We're not meant to be alone. I was going to make a Genesis joke right there, but I will, I will not do that. Either way, it's just a really great time for, you know, members of the church to just connect again. And also, eat some good food, okay? I, I, I'm tempted, I'm tempted to come. Uh, we do it every so often. So, uh, the next one, you'll see me there, most likely. No promises. Uh, either way, it was, it was great hosting for you guys. And, yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Well, this has been so awesome, hasn't it? You know, I just love the Word of God and the power that the Word of God has for our lives. And I've got a message for you today that I really believe is going to inspire you. So I'm trusting God for maximum impact for this Word. So come on, we've got our declaration. Let's say it out loud. I declare today that I'm ready to hear from God. I'm tuning my heart into His Word. I believe that Jesus is Lord, that His promises are true, and that His Word lasts forever. I believe that what I hear today could change my life because my best days are yet to come in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we pray that in your name because we know that when the ministry of the Word of God comes out clearly and when it's inspired by you, we know that it's going to find its place in each one of our hearts. So we just open ourselves up to you right now. We make, us, make ourselves completely teachable to your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've entitled my message today, Maybe God. You know, one of the greatest struggles of the Christian faith is the fact that God stays silent and isn't always forthcoming with what he wants us to do. So we find ourselves saying things like, well, maybe God 
Um, maybe God wants me to, or maybe God is saying, uh, maybe God wants us to, or maybe God thinks, <laughs> and we don't know how that sentence ends always, always, and so on and so forth. You know, I've come to realize that as big as God is, as unpredictable as God is, as awe-filled and awe-inspiring as God is, sometimes the realization that maybe God can do something is all we need to spark some action. Let me say that into your life right now. Maybe God. How does that sentence end? Let's find out as we go along. Um, Jonathan, the son of Saul, in the Bible, we, he knew this very well. And I just love the story. Um, and I'm going to pick it up in 1 Samuel chapter 14. I'm going to read it from verse 1. It says, later that day, Jonathan, Saul's son, Saul, of course, was the king at the time. He said to his armor bearer, come on, let's go over to the Philistine garrison patrol on the other side of the pass. But he didn't tell his father. I think there was a reason for that. And I'll touch on that in a little bit. But an armor bearer in those days was literally somebody that would stand in front of you holding the shield to protect you from the enemy. Meanwhile, Saul was taking it easy under the pomegranate tree at the threshing floor on the edge of the town of Geba. There were about 600 men with him. Ahijah, wearing the priestly ephod, was also there. And Ahijah was the son of Ahitub, the brother of Ichabod, the son of Phinehas, who was the son of Eli, the priest of God at Shiloh. No one there knew that Jonathan had gone off. The pass that Jonathan was planning to cross over to the Philistine garrison was flanked on either side by sharp rock outcroppings, cliffs named Bozes and Sainar. So you can imagine this pathway, and on either side there are these rocky outcrops. One's called Bozes, one's called Sainar. More about that later on. The cliff to the north faced Michmash. The cliff to the south faced Geba, or Gibeah, if you like. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come on now, let's go across to these uncircumcised pagans. Maybe God will work for us. <laughs> there it is. Maybe God will work for us. There is no rule that says that God can only deliver by using a big army. There were only two of them. No one can stop God from saving when he sets his mind to it. And I'm going to take that down to verse 7 where it says his armor bearer said, go ahead. Do what you think best. I'm with you all the way. What an incredible thing to have the armor bearer saying. You know, I've always loved this story and I've ministered on it quite a few times over the last few decades. But there are so many threads to pull at there. Even as I'm reading it now, I want to stop and start pulling at different threads. There's so much there. But I just love the fact that everybody else in that situation was lying around relaxing but let me tell you this, when a visionary has a vision, when the called hear the calling, when the anointed have the anointing upon them, they will stand up when all around are lying down and they will move ahead when everybody else is sitting still. Jonathan was restless. There was stuff to be done. There, there, was, there was fighting to be done. There was more to be done. There was more to be said. There was a greater victory ahead and the king himself was asleep. But I love this. Although the king, his dad, the leader was asleep, that didn't stop the next generation from laying a hold of what is theirs. You know, sometimes, and I give this as a challenge to some of the older leaders, and I'm in a, in a position now where I classify myself as one of the older leaders. We will have blind spots very often. And sometimes our blind spot is towards the younger leaders that are coming through. I was just reading a fascinating article just yesterday where somebody was saying that one of the reasons why younger people leave churches is because older people have blind spots to their ideas and to their way of doing church. And the big challenge to me is the world has changed. Is there a new way of doing this? Older leaders can have blind spots and we need younger leaders to step up and take our place or to fill in our blind spots. You see, their place isn't my place. It's their place and they have a unique vision and a unique style and a unique approach born of an innate confidence that says, yes, things might be bleak. Yes, things might look a little bit dodgy, but you know what? Maybe God, 
Maybe God is going to do something. May we always have our ear tuned in to those that are following Jesus, that are listening to him, that are coming up from a new generation who are saying maybe church can be something different. Maybe there's another way of connecting with our great and mighty God. Saul had a complete blind spot. There was a generation that was saying, we need to get up and lay a hold of something. We need to get up and fight. We need to cross over the enemies there. We're here lying under a pomegranate tree. There's something that can be done. Jonathan had grown tired of kicking his heels and waiting for the fight to come to them. Let me tell you, the bold and the strong, they run to the battle. <laughs> we move towards the conflict. That's always been a, a, um, a characteristic or a culture here at Eternity Church. Let's move towards conflict. If there's something that needs to be shut down, let's shut it down so that we don't release little foxes into the vineyard. Let's move towards the conflict, not recklessly. Not, I'm not saying we must go out there and say, oh, let's look for a fight. Yeah, you want some? I'll give it Yeah, that kind of thing. That's not what God is telling us to do. But out of a desire to not ever let the darkness win, to not let darkness linger longer than it should, may we have an attitude that says, I'm going to run to the battle. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is advancing forcefully and forceful people will lay a hold of it. Darkness should not linger longer than it should. Jonathan and his armor bearer, they stand up. And when everyone else is lying down, they decide to take on an enemy Philistine outpost. This was not going to be easy. In fact, if you read a little bit later on, and I'm probably going to pick the story up again in a couple of weeks' time. The, just the two of them are going to take on a Philistine outpost. The enemy was there. But they had to first, as you saw in the scripture there, they had to pass between two rocky outcrops. One was called Bozes, and the other was called Senar. Well, now you must know that when I see names like that, I've got to say to myself, this means something. Bozes means shining. And Senar, Senar means thorny. Now, those were probably the characteristics of those two crags of rock sticking out. One was probably shiny. Maybe it was a certain type of rock that had a high metal content. Or maybe it shone when it, when it rained. I don't know. Um, Sainar meant thorny. There, there's no other way we can possibly understand that. But when we decide to move forward and to do something for God and to step up and to take that pathway, leaving behind those that are lying down and sleeping while the enemy is having a field day, then we are always going to pass through two particular places. We're going to pass through Bozes and, and Sainar. When we decide to move, there will always be the shining attraction of Bozes to distract us, and there will always be the thorns to ensnare us. Both are intent on keeping us from getting there, but in two very, very different ways. You see, people, when we set our hearts on the things of the kingdom of God, and we have decided that our life is going to be a beacon of hope, you are immediately at odds with the enemy of the things of God, and the best way to get you off task is to present you with an alternative. When I was sensing the call of God in my life and realizing that God wanted me in ministry, I went to my regional manager at the bank in whose MasterCard division I used to work, and I told him that I was planning on leaving. And he then told me that there was going to be a promotion that awaited me in a few months, which brought a salary rise and a couple of other perks possibly. And while it was attractive, considering that the church I was about to take over could not afford to pay me anything, I knew that I needed to go because maybe God, maybe God had spoken. Maybe God had put that in my spirit. Maybe God had brought that alive in my life and in my wife's life at that time. The thorny outcrops, those are people telling you that you made the wrong choice. And let me say this to you, very often, they're the people that are close by. They're the ones that feel they've got a right to speak directly to you, and very often they have. And so often, it'll be very well intended as well. They don't mean any harm. They will tell you that you've made the wrong choice. And so you become so ensnared in the thorns of doubt that you spend all your time dislodging thorns and no time walking forward. When we were called to give up our, our church and our life in, in South Africa um, and to move over to the UK to an uncertain future, 
we still believe that maybe God, <laughs> but the thorny opinions came out. Not a lot. Grant you, it wasn't a lot. Most people actually saw the call of God. But it was enough to make us almost second guess ourselves when people would say things to us like, I'm not sure that God's in this. Or the big one that we got would be the timing's wrong. You've got your timing all wrong. They meant well. In fact, what a lot of them were doing was saying, I'm not comfortable with this right now, so I'm going to stick some thorns in there because I haven't got my head around this yet. Um, we made a decision that we were going. And to, to, we actually chose to ignore the naysayers because God had warned us that they were coming. And so what we did was we took scriptures that, were, that we felt that God had spoken into our lives that ministered to us about the maybe God and we stuck them all around our house. We put them up above the sink so when you were doing the dishes, you would see it. We put it above the stove while you were cooking. We put it above the TV set. We put it on the back of the toilet door. Everywhere around our house, we had little scriptures of promise. And we read those, whatever we were doing around the house, we were looking at the maybe God. Maybe God is in this. Maybe God is going to do something. Can I say this to you? You worried about something that's going to happen in the future. You worried about this coming week. Maybe tomorrow. Is not looking like a good day. But I want you to know that maybe God is going to do something big. And how would you know unless you trusted him? How would you know unless you got there to find out? Why do people criticize those that are moving ahead? I think it's because they wish they were. <laughs> they wish they were doing it. They wish they were you. They wish they had thought of that. You can only see how immobile something is when something moving quicker actually rushes past you. It's like when you're driving and you're going down the A11 or the A47 or something like that and you're trundling along and you think you're doing a fair speed and suddenly somebody goes past you and suddenly you think, my goodness, am I actually even standing still? Am I actually moving at all? When someone gets up while you're lazing around and says, we're going to take on the enemy, we think, hang on, that makes me look bad. It makes me look useless. So instead of joining them, we try and stop them. But you know, we so badly need the attitude of the armor bearer who in verse 7 said, I'm with you all the way. <laughs> I'm with you all the way. The dream of every pastor is people who step forward and say, I'm with you all the way. But then who actually stick with you all the way. I've had many people saying, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to finance your ministry. I'm going to... I don't even know where those people are now, let alone their support. You don't need to understand always where the leader is going. You don't even have to agree with where they are going. The, the armor bearer didn't get a say in this. Did you notice that? He, he wasn't being consulted. He had to just trust and believe. And sometimes we've got to do that with those that lead us. I've got to do that with those that lead our area. We heard from Roy Todd just over the last few weeks. He's my immediate boss, if you want to give it that word. He's the person that I report to immediately. And further than that, we report to national leadership as well. And we don't have to always understand where the leader is going. We don't always have to agree with where the leader is going. Just trust and believe that they have seen something that you haven't seen. And they're marching to the beat of a drum that you cannot hear. But as long as they hear it, everyone will fall in time with the leader as the leader starts to take on that pace. I challenge leaders out there. If you're hearing God starting to call, if you're hearing the beat of a different drum starting to beat, won't you start marching to that? God is doing something and people will start to automatically fall in line. That it happens when somebody is walking to a certain pace, very often the people next to them will look at their pace and start to fall in. That's a natural conformity that we have as human beings. I know that certainly from my days as a soldier when we had to march and everything had to be done with a certain precision. And God is calling us into that discipline. And he is saying to us, I need you to be marching to that beat of that drum. The Apostle Paul said it so very well when he said, follow me as I follow him. Follow me as I follow him. And I would say that to anybody in church, don't give your leaders a hard time. Don't make your leader regret actually taking on this calling. Don't make it hard for people to lead you. Are you difficult to lead? Follow me as I follow him. And here at Eternity Church, 
Who knows what God has in the future? We're certainly going to start listening even more intently than before in these crazy times. But I see a different style of church arising. And I'm trying to hear the voice of God. I'm trying to hear the beat of that drum as I travel through shiny places and thorny crags. <laughs> With you all the way means literally that. It's not a good time commitment. It's almost like a marriage where for better or for worse is the commitment that we're being asked to make. And I would say to the church that you're serving at, if you're not part of a church yet, I, I would encourage you to find one where Jesus is preached and where you feel like you can grow in community with the rest of the people that are part of that church. I want to say when you do that, make it a for better or for worse kind of commitment because God is working and God is moving. I want to have a look maybe, as I said, at, at the rest of the story a little bit later on. But suffice it to say, I'll, I'll let you know kind of what happens at the end, as if you don't know already. A great victory was in fact won, with once again probably one of the worst battle strategies known to mankind. But isn't that just typical of God? Whenever a great victory is won, there's always something crazy that's going to happen to make the people get there. It's once again like Joshua at Jericho, let's walk around the city a few times and then we're going to win. Didn't make a huge amount of sense. But that sentence... Maybe God will work for us is so key and so compelling that we need to understand it to appreciate it. We don't know exactly what God is going to do. I think God likes to surprise us. But how would we know unless we trusted him? Maybe he is about to do something amazing in our time. Maybe he's about to do something incredible in your family. Maybe he's about to blow something wide open in your business. Maybe... He's going to bless you more than he ever has before. Maybe he's going to walk with you through a shadow valley. And that's, it's that maybe that keeps me interested. If I understood everything about God, if I could fathom everything about him and his thinking, I'd probably get bored. It keeps me at his feet. It keeps me listening. It keeps me trusting. It keeps me taking risks just in case God is going to act. Just in case God is about to do something, I'm going to keep on following and I'm going to keep on listening. And as long as he gives me breath, I'm going to keep on preaching. You see, the maybe of God is much more powerful than the promise of Satan. The maybe of God holds a lot more hope than the promises of the devil. Nobody can stop God when he sets his mind to it. I want you to know that concerning your life, God has set his mind to it. Concerning your future, God has set his mind to it. In your money and in your business, God has set his mind to it. God is interested in you. God is working in you. Because of his great name, you hear his name. Sorry, you, you hear his name, but at the same time, you bear his name. It's something that you wear. You bear his name. And we cannot, he cannot let his own name down. We are carriers of the name of Jesus. We are Christ followers. Christians means Christ followers. We carry that name. And he cannot see his own name being trashed or made a fool of. So when we bear his name, we will see him coming through for us in his time, in his way, in his plan. Trust him. Trust him. Because maybe God. Won't you pray with me for a moment? Heavenly Father, as we reflect on these things, we realize that we serve a mysterious God. We don't always understand you. And that is so hard for us in our finite thinking. But God, we choose today to say that maybe you can do something that is beyond our understanding. Maybe you can come through for us more than what we can ever comprehend. Maybe you are working right now. Maybe there's something, somebody even watching this right now. where Something has just dropped in their mind and they think, I've got to give him a chance. Lord Jesus, I trust you and I pray. Heavenly Father, that you would work in each one of our lives according to your perfect plan as we surrender ourselves to you. And maybe, God, maybe you're going to do something. Maybe the, the greatest part of our lives is yet to come, as we said in our declaration earlier on. And maybe, God, maybe your Holy Spirit is just working in somebody's life right now. 
and bringing them to a point of decision. Thank you, Jesus. Now, while, while we just keep ourselves focused on him, I just want to say this to you. Maybe God is calling you today. Maybe you watching this was not a mistake. Maybe you were just flipping channels. Maybe you just saw it come up on your, on your, on your live feed or you came up on your, your social media page. God believes in appointments and I believe this is a God appointment. And maybe God is saying to you right now, won't you take me seriously? Won't you just trust and believe that maybe I've got something that is going to take your life to a whole new level? Maybe I can make your past make sense. Maybe I can wipe clean every mistake that you've made. And maybe if you trust me, you will see that I'm a good God, that I have nothing but love for you, acceptance, and I've got nothing but a desire to see you live a good life. And you know, it, it takes something like a prayer that says, and maybe you want to say these words as well, Lord Jesus, Today I invite you into my life. I choose to believe that you're God. I choose to believe that you have a plan for my life. And I ask you to forgive me for every wrong thing that I've done up to now. But I yield my life to you. I surrender my life to you right now. And I place my life in your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer, we'd love to hear from you via the website, weareeternity.com. You're welcome to get hold of us through our Facebook page as well. And uh, we're also active on Instagram. Check us out. There's so many ways you can get hold of us. It's been an absolute pleasure ministering to you today. I hope you enjoy what's left of the summer holidays. And we look forward to seeing you again really soon. Wow, one absolutely amazing message to receive this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you also to everyone that's joining from all around the world. We're here in beautiful, sunny Norfolk. And you might notice that I am not Chloe this morning. Now, Chloe's been doing an absolutely amazing job with Ignite, doing the Kids Rock stuff. And I know from all of those videos and posts that you guys have had an amazing time learning memory verses, doing some cool acting, making some stuff, doing some crafts. If you've missed any of those, go back to some weeks and find and do those crafts and share those videos because that's amazing. Now, what I'd love for you guys to do, we're about to start a new year in the school season. So what it would be cool for you to do is write down three things three of the best things that you want to happen this year, write and comment those below so we as leadership and as a church can pray over you and pray for those things. Awesome guys, have an amazing week and see you next time. Bye.